Hello, hello. Uh, thank you for everybody for coming. Excited to be here in Asia. Um, really looking forward to this chat with Armani. I think Armani has been one of the true uh, 10x engineers that has really helped build uh, many things within the ecosystem, has really been forged within the fire. So excited to chat with Armani today about bridging two different economies. But maybe to start it off, Armani, I would love to get your point of view on why build Backpack? Uh, what, what is the grand vision of what you're building today? A lot of founders might hear something like this, <clears throat> and they might tell you a story about, you know, we're going to rebuild finance, disrupt the financial system. Uh, uh, and, and that's true, uh, 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 certainly, w w with Backpack, but, but it's, it's, a, it's a bit vague. It's like, well, okay, well, what does that mean, right? So you might, you know, start by defining some objectives. You know, I, I might want to like maximize the number of transactions flowing through some verifiable computing machine. That's like okay, very engineering centric, uh, a point of view. Um, maybe you come from traditional finance and and you think, okay, well, I want to minimize the compliance costs. That's like an enormous tax on the world, right? That's a that's a good thing to do. Um, you might talk about something a little more philosophical, right? You might think about reducing the error rate of this like collective database that we all use you know, called money or whatever. It's like, okay, like, what, what does all this stuff actually mean? It's all, like, super vague, very high level. Like, what's the actual uh, uh, vision? Um, and, and you hear this ty ty type of thing a lot. And, uh, you know, I, you might ask yourself, well, wh why do people have this kind of orientation? And I think part of the problem that I'm certainly guilty of is thinking about crypto and thinking about the crypto economy as this, like, separate parallel thing. Right? It's this thing that's like this special like, a thing that's separate from the actual financial system. And you have this kind of uh, 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 demarcation or bifurcation uh, uh, between like real world assets and crypto assets. Uh, and, and you see this start to kind of leak into, into the discourse where you have folks you know, on crypto Twitter recently uh, lamenting about DeFi. Right? It's like uh, you know, pe people uh, really just asserting that it's kind of valueless. Uh, and that might sound a, 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 a bit harsh, uh, but you know you have these tokens generating yield that are generating more tokens, and it's this like circular like snake eating its own tail type thing. It's like where is the actual value in all of this stuff? It's like really cool tech, sure, um, but fundamentally finance and accounting and all this stuff, DeFi, it's not actually useful unless you're rooted in in, in the real world. Right? Unless you're rooted in physical goods and services that are making everybody's lives better. Right? Um, um, and this is kind of the, 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 the fundamental, I think, uh, uh, orientation for how kind of I look at the uh, kind of backpack and, and the problems uh, uh, that we should be solving. Uh, which is to say that you know, the crypto economy isn't the separate thing. The crypto economy like, is the economy. And in the same way that software ate the world, crypto should really be eating all of finance. So it's like, OK, this is starting to make more sense. Let's just go do this. Uh, but then you might you know, ask the question, well, OK, that sounds great. But how do you actually operationalize this? Like, what, what, what are the actual steps? Um, and, and I think like, the backpack uh, uh, approach is more or less uh, to break things up into a couple different market segments that kind of have defined our kind of approach and go to market and strategy up until now. Where, you know, to start, we really started with the crypto native market market segment. Like this is the heart and soul of the company. It's all about the wallet. It's all about self custody. Um, everything from the mad lads to the wallet to our kind of uh, genesis in the Solana ecosystem. And let's go out into the world and just put self custody into the hands of as many people as possible. But I, I think it's all kind of Fair to say that that market's more or less saturated, um, and and we need to find ways to kind of grow, grow, grow that market. <clears throat> so then you move on to like a second market segment, which I'd really define as like the centralized exchange market segment. So these are folks that trade a bunch, people that maybe don't care about self custody, <coughs> but people that really care about crypto assets. What's really interesting about this market segment is that it's just so jaw droppingly large. Um, uh, uh, like, and Backpack's a really good example of this. So for context, over the past year, during Solana's like, rise from like $8 to like $200 or whatever, we did as much volume as Robinhood did uh, during the 2021 bull cycle. It's like 
it's, it's hard to wrap your head around how big this like, opportunity is in, in the second market segment. Uh, uh, and that's really kind of what we've been focused on with the exchange and with the trading product. Uh, and this segues into a bunch of stuff. But the problem with these two market segments is that you still have this fundamental snake eating its own tail problem. Uh, uh, it's like, where, where, like, this is all fine and dandy. It's awesome tech. It's cool speculative behavior. You have some really incredible kind of uh, uh, innovations that have come to the world uh, in, in crypto native assets. Uh, uh, but we still need to bridge into the real world, right? We still need to do things like, you know, uh, 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 you know, people like to talk about tokenizing assets or, or whatever, uh, but there's this third market segment that is just honestly really hard to break into, and it's probably why nobody does it, which I would, it's this kind of broad bucket that I would describe as this uh, uh, mass market mainstream consumer finance, right? This is everything from like brokerages, uh, you know, E-Trade, Robinhood, you know, banks, uh, uh, you know, Chase, whatever, uh, but it's all about kind of taking that next step and bringing everything that we love and care about in crypto into traditional finance. Um, um, and then you could start really competing at this third market segment where now you could start talking about uh, not just crypto native assets and then speculative assets, but actually using the tech to eat finance, right? Tokenizing stocks, tokenizing bonds, uh, treasuries, uh, uh, you know, payments, fiat all around the world. Uh, uh, and, and really kind of, you know, people like to talk about hot swapping uh, the back end of the financial system. Uh, and, and this is really kind of the key, right? And there's really only been a couple companies that have even tried this, let alone have been successful about this. Maybe the most notable of this is, is like Coinbase. I think they've, they've done a really I, impressive I, job. I, I like the hot swap analogy because it is true. If software is eating the world, software will also eat finance. And blockchain is going to be a component that helps facilitate that, but you also need exchanges, fiat on-ramps and off-ramps. And I think it kind of goes back to the title of the talk, which is bridging each of these economies. And really, Backpack has been really at the forefront, in my mind, especially within Asia and continuing to expand globally into these new markets. I would love to kind of maybe shift the question around product. Uh, generally, if you're building a consumer product or talking with VCs, they're always like, how do you build a 10x better product, Armani? Uh, and I would love for you to deep dive from the product perspective, how you're really thinking about melding these two different worlds so that blockchain can actually help replace the back end system of the financial institution. So whenever you use a product, you never think about what the back end's doing, right? It's, everybody kind of says this, right? You think about, oh, I'm, I'm going to dinner, I'm going to pay, you know, uh, Logan. Uh, with my money from, I live, I live in Tokyo, Japan, I'm going to pay uh, uh, Logan some money from Tokyo, uh, but he lives in Miami, but then we also have some, uh, a friend from Singapore, and nobody's like, okay, I'm going to like bridge this money to this chain, or, 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 or do a fiat off-ramp and pay you with an ACH transfer or whatever. It's like, no, I'm just going to pay my friend, right? Just like, just make the thing happen, right? And, and, and so when we think about products, there's, you know, having this on-chain, off-chain distinction is, is kind of going in the wrong direction. It's like, what does that actually mean? It's like, okay, like on-chain, you have some verifiable, like immutable ledger. Uh, on-chain, it's like this opaque thing that can maybe be uh, 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 reversed and, and, and forged and, and, and maybe not something that we want to trust. Uh, uh, but it's all about just the value proposition. Uh, and what is like the thing that I can do? And I think from the backpack perspective, uh, I really think a lot about opportunity cost of capital. And, and, and answering this question from the perspective of the user, like, where is the optimal place to have my money? What is the set of all the things that I can do with my dollars, with my soul, with my ETH, with my Bitcoin, with my retirement account, uh, with, with, with all of my stocks or whatever? Um, and, and that's the thing to optimize uh, if you want to talk about 10xing product, just 10xing like, how far your dollar can go. And, and ultimately, we want to create like the most compelling place for people to store their money. And, and whether that's on-chain um, inside of a self-custodial wallet or whether that's off-chain uh, inside of a, a, an exchange or, or something uh, that looks like a bank but isn't quite a bank or something that looks like a brokerage but isn't quite a brokerage, that's kind of uh, an implementation detail. Uh, and, and it's simply all about 10xing the things that I can do. And, and so you can imagine things like, you know, a lot of people like to talk about uh, these very capital efficient liquidity systems. You know, things like cross collateral where I can, you know, take uh, uh, my, my soul and I can take my USDC and I can take my, my ETH and I can use it to like, you know, borrow some Bitcoin or whatever. Um, but that's just crypto native assets. Why are we stopping there? 
right? Um, you can talk about fiat, tokenizing stocks, tokenizing bonds, uh, retirement accounts, all these things. Um, and I, so I think from you know, the backpack point of view, uh, we not only want to kind of provide distribution to every dApp and every ecosystem, you know, most notably, obviously, in Solana, which is kind of like a, a second home for us, uh, and provide kind of the benefits of, uh, of DeFi and, and everything that you can do on chain, but also provide all of the opportunities for traditional finance. And there is this kind of generational turnover that, that you'll see um, and that I think we'll continue to see in our lifetime where it just doesn't make sense to use any of the existing uh, traditional financial applications if you're kind of crypto native and if you're like part of this like newer generation of, of decentralized finance where it's just way more convenient to have your money uh, in Coinbase or Backpack or whatever. Uh, it's like I can do everything that I can do uh, in my kind of, uh, uh, you know, not to pick on any given financial product, but I can do everything I can do there, but I also have access to the entire crypto economy. Um, and I think as time goes on, as the industry continues to grow, uh, bridging these two worlds to make backpack your primary financial services provider is ultimately uh, where we want to end up in. And I think that is the, is the ultimate end game. Perhaps in the last couple of minutes, we can take a left turn and maybe do rapid fire questions uh, to spice things up a little bit. What is one of your more contrarians opinion uh, in this space that perhaps many other people do not believe, but you strongly believe? Contrarian uh, uh, opinions. Hmm. This might sound, I, I might sound like I'm contradicting myself, uh, uh, but, and, and, and this view is not uncommon in traditional startups, uh, uh, but it's very common in, in crypto, which is to say that everything matters except for product. Like, like that's kind of the view that, that I think a lot of the crypto world has, 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 has seen, uh, you know, the rise of meme coins, uh, and things like that. But I think in crypto specifically, there is this view that value is this arbitrary thing. Uh, value is this meme. Uh, and, and memes are important. Nobody loves memes uh, uh, more than me. Uh, 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 but I think one of the, it sounds so ridiculous to say, it's like, yeah, value is not arbitrary. If you like cure cancer, that's obviously valuable for the world, right? Uh, uh, but I think that is maybe uh, the most obvious but, but uh, important things that I think the space uh, has been sidetracked with over the past year, uh, and people might not like me saying that, but yeah. I, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about Mad Lads. Mad Lads is one of the top NFT communities uh, within all of crypto. Uh, is there any alpha or uh, spicy things that you can tell to the Mad Lad community? Yeah, I, I, I don't know about a, 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 any particular alpha, but I think the way that I think about community um, is that there's kind of three things that are, 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 are important when you want to build one of these things. A lot of people try and a lot of people fail. You can go to Magic Eden or Tensor or OpenSea and see a graveyard of communities that are built uh, that are built on, on vibes and, 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 and some random thing that, that boils down to sitting in a Discord and, and typing into a chat, which I, I love to do. Um, but the Mad Lads approach is basically three things, right? It's like, the first thing that you need is just purpose. You need a reason to exist. And if you start asking yourself, what is the purpose of any given NFT community, you immediately start writing off the majority of them. Like, like they have no purpose. Uh, they have no goal. They have no reason to wake up in the morning to actually go do something as a collective. Um, I think the purpose uh, of Mad Lads is, is manyfold. We obviously have all the products. We also have, obviously have just generally supporting the Solana ecosystem. I think it's positioned in a pretty unique way from that point of view. Um, I, I think the, the second thing that you really need, or at least from the backpack point of view, is just to like support others. Like it sounds really simple, right? But an exchange in a wallet is in a really kind of unique position where we can make an incredible business by just supporting other projects in other ecosystems. And that's a very positive something. And if you can do that, you can build uh, a, a really beautiful, vibrant ecosystem uh, uh, around that. Uh, and, and then I think like, the third thing is like, you just have to genuinely care. Uh, it sounds so simple and so silly, but if you take a look at like, all the corporations, whether it's Starbucks or whatever, coming into NFTs and, and, and trying their hand at it, they all fail on this dimension, where they're like this soulless corporation that is not actually invested into the community, doesn't actually care about the industry, and doesn't actually care about what they're doing. And so you kind of have to be consistent uh, on that dimension as well. So I don't know, that's kind of uh, my, my take on community Amazing. building with Mad Lads. 
everybody. I'm Amani Ferrante, uh, CEO and founder of Backpack. Thank you.